Hello and welcome to DJM Woodworks. My name is Tim and today I wanted to share part one of the process of designing and building a tool cart as part of a wood shop restructuring since it's getting a little crowded in the shop. Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you like the video as there's more to come. The drawing before you is an overall view of the Omni cart in what is referred to as a third angle projection drawing plus the isometric view. All this means is that the object is broken down into three major views such as top, front and a side view with additional views added as needed. Here's the top view of the drawer and a sectional view of the drawer to show detail for building. Um, with additional layers, we can add additional detail and take a closer look at what we will be building. For example, we can add section lines, hidden lines, hatch layers, hardware, dimensions, definition points, and center lines. Taking a closer look, this is our top view, so, we will need, so the Omni cart will be 38 by 24. This is our front view. The drawer side will be approximately 15 and 1 16th wide, with the drawers themselves at 14 and 15 sixteenths, 9 and 3 eighths, 9 and 1 eighth, 9 and 1 eighth. Shelves will be 15 and 9 16 wide, with the shelves evenly spaced out. To see the drawer detail, as shown. So you can see the side view here, we're 24 wide. The hardware locations are already added, so we know exactly where we'll be placing the hardware within the cabinetry. Drawer detail is as shown. This is the top view of the drawer, and this is a sectional view of the drawer with the detail for the screw placements and the construction of the actual drawer. In addition, the box square is already calculated and added to the drawing, so we know what we should expect when the drawer is fully completed and put together. We should have 23 and 1 32nd to the corners, making sure that we're square. That said, time to make some sawdust. At this juncture, I did not capture cutting the 2x4s, milling them to size, and gluing them together since the camera was not available. At this point, the first step after the glue up is cutting the superstructure of the Omnicart to their final dimensional lengths. To ensure the design remains true and you're not forcing parts together, it is critical to measure accurately.
At this point, all the superstructure beams are cut to the correct length. For the air, I'll need to glue that piece back together. Because it's an end grain glue up, you place the glue on thin, pipe on two, let it get tacky, then add another coat of glue. Then you clamp it together. Next up, we'll be implementing the joint configuration for the superstructure. I was lucky enough to purchase some 2x4s at our local big box store, Home Depot. And fortunately, um, I grabbed the 2x4s, glued them together, as you can see. And uh, these are what I'm going to use for the structure of a cart that I'm going to be building, looking to restructure the garage uh, space to utilize the space better, create some storage, and some places for equipment. Currently behind me, I have a uh, cart that houses my sanders as well as a mortiser. Um, <clears throat> a couple of notes from uh, about uh, two by fours. Um, these, uh, hopefully you can see it well, uh, the 2x4 has a red pinkish tint to it, okay? Very attractive, nice looking. It's going to look good when I get it going. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see this right here by my finger, um, that is sap coming from the 2x4. It's one of the reasons why store lumber, um, in this case construction lumber, is not the greatest to produce uh, furniture, if you will. You can be as selective as you want about the wood and stuff like that, but in a lot of cases, well, let me find a good example. Here's one. If you look at this board right here, okay, you see that nice strip of dark wood? Nice contrast, looks really cool, doesn't it? Unfortunately, this little circle here, this is called the pith. In quality hardwoods, that's removed from the wood. Uh, that is an that's the first growth of the tree that's an unstable area, an unstable uh, wood. Um, but for our purposes, using it for a tool cart, um, it's good enough, so we're going to use it. <clears throat> as you glue 2x4s together, okay, as you can see in this one, try to create contrast in the wood grain, okay? Boards that would tend to cup in this direction, Okay, you want the bottom board to cup in the opposite direction. This creates stability once you glue them together. <clears throat> Another board with the pith very close to the wood. That said, let's begin. First thing we're going to do, now that we've glued our wood together, squared it up by two and a half by two and a half because we're going to go ahead and prepare to make the joints. In this case I will be making castle joints for the wood so I'm going to lay that out and then cut it first on the bandsaw and then clear it out um, with the mortiser or a little bit of cleanup on the table saw. We'll show you how that goes. Thank you. <clears throat> 